Here we have Kira, a female, the unsuspecting partner of the wargamer, lured out of hiding by cheap lager and snacks from Niddle. She follows the trail just like a moth seduced by the flame. The wine is a deception, the light at the end of a very long tunnel. Kira is blissfully unaware that she is, in fact, about to meet her fate. Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. In this video, I am joined yet again by Kira, and she is going to paint her second model using the Warhammer TV's How to Paint Untamed Beasts video. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please do click that subscribe button for more videos to come. Or if you want to support the channel in any way at all, check out the description below. But you're back. I'm here. Ready to paint your next model. Now, for those of you who didn't see the first video, do check it out. I'll leave it up there. You painted a Space Marine Intercessor using just the Space Marine Intercessor starter set. And I think, and a lot of other people I think agreed, that you did a very good job. How did you feel that one went? It went, it went really well. It was very basic. Obviously it was very basic, but it, for my first ever goal, I was quite proud. I thought you did a really good job. Yeah, it was amazing. My first model was a big blob of disgusting mess. So you yeah. did a great job, but you've not painted much in between. We have done a tiny bit, haven't we? I've done two models since. So I've painted three models in total ever. Yeah, and you didn't finish the second one because you gave up because... The, the blood ball human didn't come out <laughs> blood great. Human, it was yellow, it started to look awful, there was no going back. It wasn't that middle piece where you're like, you know, where it looks worse before it looks better. It just didn't look very well. Just sort of steadily did that. But then I did a um, blood angel that turned out really well, I think. So you will have seen those already if you're part of the Discord group. I put some pictures up in there. I um, was really happy with that last one. Hmm. Yeah, so that boosted my confidence. This is a rather tricky model. We've got the leader from the Untamed Beasts, and that's a lot of flesh, a lot of bone, and a lot of animal hide. There's very little armor. There's not a lot of room for mistakes here because he has a really like defined million pack stomach. Um, super ripped man. And I think flesh is a very difficult thing to do, as is yellow. So you, you don't you don't go for the easy stuff, do you? But we're using the contrast paints. We spent about 50 quid on some of these uh, paints I don't already have. And we are going to paint along to the Warhammer TV How to Paint one. You've not watched it no. beforehand, actually. No. We did. You, I did maybe suggest you should, but you didn't. You no, wanted to go completely yeah, yeah, completely blind in it. <laughs> so, so I made it take twice as long as it probably should have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a nice four hour video. But um, we'll show you how it went at the end. And we'll show you all the little processes throughout. And I will catch you guys back at the end. I'm feeling good about this. I think you can do it. How do you feel? Great. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we will catch you guys back at the end. How loud can I have this? As loud as you like. You can be as loud as you like. <laughs> Peep show. <laughs> right, here we go. Untamed beasts are a nomadic tribe that hunt and devour prey. That's not done thing. Too thin coats. Now the first area we're going to start on is the skin. We're going to do two paintbrushes worth of contrast medium and one paintbrush of gullum and flesh. Slap it on. I'm really scared. <laughs> the bad jabbing him in the open mouth with a painty. But oh, this is going everywhere. He said that's okay though. It's so tempting to go back over it a second time because it does sort of just disappear, doesn't it? Is he naked under here? That actual ass crack. The parts that are drying are just invisible. His looks way darker than that, isn't it? There we go. Yeah, his looks way different. Okay, well, you know what? I did exactly what he said. I did two to one. Try this again. To make the contrast paint a little bit thicker, Kira decided to go one to one with contrast thinner and the Gilliman flesh. That looks better. So he's supposed to have cleavage. There we are with that contrast his mix now applied to the skin. His still looks to very do. different to mine. Mine is brown in the recesses and then just grey everywhere else. His is brown the whole way. And comparing the two, it does still look quite different. So Kira decides to go back again, straight out of the pot. I just don't know if this is a good idea or not, but it's the only way to not make him grey. I'm putting it on really, really lightly, which means it's not, it's not pooling in the recesses where it's supposed to. Isn't that the whole point of a contrast paint? To take the effort out of doing this. That looks better. He's got one really brown leg, but you know what? If he always stands like that, it's going to get moist on anyway. There. Step one complete after three tries. 
that was really difficult. So the contrast paint didn't seem to do anything for a while. I kept having to, like, I thinned it down to begin with, um, but it just wasn't <laughs> leaving any color on the model. He had gray skin for about two and a half coats. So eventually I just started using it straight from the pot, not putting any contrast medium in it whatsoever. And that worked, but it was a frustrating step because it took so long. Okay. Uh, contrast mitts now applied to the skin. We're gonna move on to doing a layer. So this will be using flayed on flesh. Just a little bit with a little touch of water. Make sure you get our brush to a nice point just by spinning it around. And all we're gonna do is start laying up onto that skin texture. And there we are with the skin now laid. <laughs> well, good luck. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, Mr. Fly. Didn't happen in the video. <laughs> Right, pointy brush, pointy, pointy brush. So all he did was go back over some bits and I saw the four bits he went over. So I'm gonna do that and then hope for the best. I'm terrified, okay. I think he did this bit and probably this bit. Okay, and then according to the video, you're done. <laughs> I get it, I get he's, he's like highlighting the little muscles Little muscles. I don't even know. That's not even a six pack. That's like, that's not good. You know, that's the face of roid rage. With that step complete, it's on to nipples and scars using Bugman's Glow. That could be his name, Areolus. No, you don't like it. Boop. Oh, that's a large nipple. Make the other one the same size so he's even Stevens. <laughs> I've not done a bad job on that. He just has weird nipples. No, I've done a bad job on that. He's got one normal nipple and one oval. Scars and nipples now done. We're going to move on to highlighting the skin. And for this, we're going to use raised bone. So around these actual muscles, I'm just going to do like little bits here and there. So I just like just to add a bit of definition, so not too much. I just want to say that his nipples look very different to my nipples. He gave him massive nipples with clearly defined areola and points. I think that was a lie where he just dotted them. I think he spent a lot of time on those nipples. Yeah, so he said just a little bit here and there. Here and there. Just here and there. Here and there. So a bit just here. A bit just there. Whew, it's very high stress. With the flesh finished, the model's looking really good at this point. That's a tough job, so I think she needs a nice refreshing break. Probably the first of many. And there we are with the skin now done. We're gonna move on to the next detail, which is to paint the bone. Now for this, we're gonna be using skeleton hold, followed with a highlight of wraith bone. What animal is this from? It's an omnivore, look at those little flat teeth. Omnivore jawbone wouldn't be the best. Just thinking like piercing. Blunt force trauma. I wish there was a longer pause so that I could, and he kind of showed it a bit more so that I could copy the picture more. Cause he literally shows you the finished bit for a second. Right, he does all of this, does he? Well, we can't see. What is this? That was not a rhetorical question. What, what, what is this? That, it looks like one of those things that you find at the bottom of the ocean. You know, what yeah. are they called? Like, Manta ray? They're like, no, no. They look like giant wood lice. With a highlight of a shabty bone, I think that contrast paint's pretty good. Okay, what's next? Bone weapons now done. We're going to move on to painting the horns. And for this, we'll be using skeleton horn again. Horns. Whilst it's wet, we're then going to apply a little bit of gold grunter for the base of the horns. Skeleton horn and gore. Skeleton horn, gore grunter fur. Gore grunter fur. Is a gore grunter an animal? Okay, what did he do what with it? First, get some skeleton horn on to be brushed. Mm -hmm. Just load some up onto the palette first of all. Get the brush to a nice point, and we're going to start applying that on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one side of the helmet first, and so one set of horns, and whatever I do here, just mimic on the other side. This is why I need to follow along video. I would never think to put these colors together to paint those horns. What are those weird, um, those weird gray blobs? We ended up with some weird mold lines on this that even after having undercoated, they still remained gray. And I think that was some sort of inject, you did notice them. I think it was kind of an injection mold issue and they're exactly the same on either end of his hand 
the top of his axe and both sides of his head horns. They look like little growths, little nipples everywhere that shouldn't be there. They weren't on his model. No, they definitely weren't on his model, so I don't know if we just got a defective one. It's just very special. Kind of doing its own thing here. Stop going everywhere. Change my mind, I don't like contrast paints. Just go everywhere. It's rum and lemonade time. Okay, we've had a snack break, we've had a rum break. On contrast the now thing. applied to the horns. What we're gonna do is start highlighting it. For this ah. we're gonna be using race bone. Now the key thing is to use your edge of your brush and just to really get some definition on those ribbly bits as well when you go across. So what I'm gonna do is, as I've come here, I'm just gonna spin my arm around and then just start picking those ribbly bits. Right. The horn's now done, we're gonna be... Okay, so all I have to do is add de definition to the wriggly bits and spin my arm around. So that sounds easy enough. We're using a shabty bone here, I think, aren't we? Well, yeah, I keep putting new ones out and then I don't need to. It's a waste of paint. Stop wasting paint. It's all I hear when the camera's cut. Stop wasting paint. Oh dear. Okay, so highlight the wriggly bits. Spin your arm around, highlight the wriggly bits. How are you supposed to do that? In an effort to copy the video exactly, I think Kira's got herself in a bit of a twist. But a very nice finish mixing the two contrast paints on the horns. We're almost halfway through. Paint to the next area, which is the dark brown leather area. Yay! So we're going to start with Wildwood, and then we're going to finish off with a highlight of Bay Blade Brown. I'm excited. This is like, this is going to be a good step. I'm going to start applying that Wildwood. I'm just going to get a little bit on my palette like so. Just get my brush to a nice point. Spin it around until I'm happy. I'm going to start painting. <laughs> So first of all, we're we'll going to start applying it on his wrists where the bindings are. And there's also some areas around the back of his. Oh, I painted those different sides. color. Oops. That's okay. Okay, he said spin the brush till you're happy. Six years later. <laughs> you wouldn't want to make a mistake now with this one because it's really dark. Eee! This is not a boop situation. This is an E situation. Although they require a pretty steady hand, I do like the dark contrast paints. That was my favourite step so far. And for this, we're using Bane Blade Brown. Ooh. So what I'm hey. going to do is just pick out some of those raised edges of the actual straps. I'm going to do every single one, just little ones here and there. Right, not every little strap, but just where the light would hit. It looks fine the way it is. Eee. This step looks very subtle, but it does bring the contrast into a slightly more realistic colour. Next area, which is the light leather and hide. And for this, we'll be using Gorgon to fur, which will follow with a highlight of kidney flesh tone. Okay, for starters, his arm straps and buckle look nothing like mine. I think you're using a filter because everything is much more opaque and darker in his. Oh, I like the color. That's a nice color, isn't it? Oh, am I holding it wrong? How do you hold your models? Bringing the model together, separating that flesh in the front is really adding definition. Okay. Start highlighting using Cadian Flesh Tone. What we're looking to do is pick out any edges and raised bits. It's my unimpressed face right now. He said the underside of the cape, didn't he? Those were his words. With the cape completed and corrected, she moves on to the next step, but out of rum, it's on to red wine. It doesn't go down as smooth after the rum. <laughs> okay. Right. That was a whole thing. I'm not talking about that anymore. With the gold to now applied and dry, we're going to start highlighting using Cadian Flesh Tone. So I think I'm highlighting everywhere I just did with the... I don't know what it's called, fur colour. Oh, nice it's always makes me nervous. Ooh, that's a thick highlight right there. It's not what you want really, is it? But it's done now. Now, I don't know what to do with this little bit here, the little ripped flap. I should take better care of his clothes, but... I feel Kira's a bit hard on herself there, because that highlighting's really good. We're going to move on to the 
the next step, which is to paint the white fur. And for this, we're going to start by using grey sear. We're then going to apply apothecary white all over that. And we'll finish off with a highlight of autumn grey. What animal is this? What animal has white fur and really brown skin? Polar bear? No, we all know polar bears don't have skin like that. Mm. Albino bear? It's not a wolf. What's that thing in The Mandalorian? It doesn't even have fur, does it? There, that looks okay. Done. He's going in with Apothecary White, which is a contrast paint. It's grey. Apothecary White is grey. Mind blown. It's very grey. Okay, it's not polar bear. What is it? Grey wolf? No. Bear? No. Bears aren't grey. I mean, this looks good. Still don't know what the hell sort of animal has like tan brown skin and then although maybe we're all the same color on the inside. The first two steps complete. It's on to the highlight of Old Run Grey. I'm hardly doing every single point on this. I'm like, Jesus. Pretty, pretty good. If I ever ask you what's that from, it's either gonna be SpongeBob, Simpsons, South Park, or The Office. Oh yeah, and Peep Show. Very seldomly friends as well. Good to me. That completes the fur on this unknown animal. I mean, what is it? We move on to the next section, which is to paint the black details. So it's mainly the leather areas. This one we start with black template, and we're gonna highlight using Bing Blake Brown. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Oh my God, does anyone else hold their breath when they're doing this? I see. Contrast paint like makes the chain mail look pretty cool. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Black Templar is the best contrast paint. With the Black Templar now applied and dry, we're going to use Bane Blade Brown to start picking out the edges of any of the black details. Okay, Bane Blade, Bane Blade Brown to highlight where we did the black. With only a few steps left, this model is starting to look really good. We're going to move on to the next detail, which is to paint the metal areas. This will be using iron and steel, we're then going to shade with Nuln Oil, finish off with a highlight of Stormhouse Silver. Oh, wow. See, I already see a couple of bits that are just going to be unpainted at the end, so I'm going to have to go back and see at what stage he painted them. Because I don't know. Right. Oh, I'm nervous to do this. I'm nervous. I think I have a tendency to add too much water. I always do what it looks like he's doing. And I have a much smaller brush than he does. I feel like that adds less water. With all the previous colors done and the metals done, we moved on, almost. It was the last step, I think. We put null oil over the chain mail and places like that, but I obviously forgot which bit was wet on the wet, which on the wet palette and dipped it into the silver and just whack that on over, and that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Having fixed that mistake, it was on, or back to the rum. There we are, with the silver now done, we're gonna move on to painting the breast details, and for this we'll be using Balthazar Gold, and we'll follow this by using some contrast paint, we'll be using Gullum and Flesh. Oh, I like this color. This is that one we used before, isn't it? Balthazar Gold, that's not really gold. Right, come here, tiny man. With the last bit of paint applied to the model itself, it's on to the base to finish it all off. Following on to the video, they recommended Agrax Earthshade on the stone underneath the model's right foot. This is quite a nice deserty, sandy colour, really fits the feel of the model. We went off script a little bit and painted the base rim black rather than brown as they recommended because we're going to use a different product. They recommended the grey texture paint, but we decided to get hold of some of the Luke's APS or Geek Gaming fast drying basing glue. This is Luke's APS Wasteland Soil. I think this product looks really good. It gives a nice feel to the Chaos Wastelands. It's just a mix of flocks, grits, small bits of rocks. You drop them on, dunk it, dip it, tap it, and it's done. Kira's third model, the third model she's ever painted. I think she's done an exceptional job, and I think you guys would agree. He's now ready to go and battle with the other warbands in the Chaos Wastelands to try and catch the eye of the Ever Chosen. There you have it, the model is done. How do you feel about that? Great, look. 
He's all finished. What a paint job. Even better than Dolan, the old man. This man, the man with no name. The man with no name. I think we were settling on maybe Ariola. But that didn't really work. So he's got no name now. Uh, Ariolas. It was Ariolas. It was Ariolas. Sorry, there we go. Ariolas. Really well done to you there. Thank How you. did you find the whole process? I know it was long and it's a bit of a slog. It's always harder when we're filming. Mm -hmm. But contrast paints, your first experience with them. I've not used them a lot. What do we think? I really like them. I yeah. struggled obviously with the skin color at the beginning. That took so long. Mm. And because that was one of the first steps, just my whole feeling towards it was like, this just is not working. What am I doing? Yeah. But um, once after that, we fixed that, went on and it was really good. I think it was the consistency that was the problem. He sort of said to do two jabs of the thinner to one of the contrast. Which one, yeah. They just ended up going really thin, like you all saw, it went sort of thin and gray and really whitewashed. It cooled in the recesses, but there was just no color. Yeah. It wasn't opaque at all, which I know contrast paints are supposed to be like fully opaque, but it, I ended up doing three layers and yeah. I was getting annoyed. It was like his one, my one doesn't look the same. So that wasn't great, but you did like the darker ones. And I myself in a previous sort of help, how to help paint video recommended the darker ones, things like the Black Templar, the Wildwood. That went yeah. over the leather and things mm. like that. That looked amazing. Uh, do we have any other problems? Yes, you did. At one point, mean to sort of clean up and use a dark wash that, that in the recesses just to, just to tidy those. It was non oil. It was non oil. But what happened? I forgot which one was on the wet palette. It was non oil, and I might have gave it a wash of silver. A nice silver wash all over his flesh. <laughs> Don't drink and paint. <laughs> yeah. That's not. That's kind of not really what you you adhere to as your as your motto, is it? I think oh. drinking and painting. But that can happen. So I don't know what more there is to say on that, really. We just did a great job. You can now go home and happily paint the other nine guys and the dog and have a full Warcry band. Then maybe I might edge you into a game. What do you think? I'm in. I've not played Warcry myself either. So I've got the Corvus Ooh. Cabal. You can have the Untamed Beast and we'll get you a game. If you guys want to see her play a game, do put something in the comments below. We've got some Age of Sigmar stuff and some Kill Team I generally do, but I think you kind of prefer the, the swords and bows, don't you? Yep. If you've enjoyed these videos, please do remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit the alarm bell for more videos to come. If you want to support the channel, check out my Amazon shop. That's new to me. In there is all the hobby essentials, your knives, your paints, all that kind of stuff. Or if you want to order the models, check out Element Games or Grim Dice and use the code Broadsword. And finally, there's my Patreon. This has a Discord group attached to it. You started posting some stuff in there now. In there. So people already knew we were doing this model. Uh, if you want to get some sort of sneak previews of what's ahead, or just want to ask me any questions or ask Kira any questions or how you found things, I'm always there to answer those questions. So thanks so much to all of my patrons. I don't think there's much more to say other than thank you very much for coming back with your second model. Well, you did lure me here. I did, yeah, with alcohol. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Thanks to the man with no name and thank you to you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you in another video. Take care. <laughs>